Hello all, uh, I am Naren from School of Chemical and Biotechnology, Shastra, Lintu University, Jao. This is a short uh, video lecture as part of the Chemical Engineering Thermodynamics 2 course. We are in uh, lecture 5 part 2, uh, where are we are going to see uh, about vapor liquid equilibrium uh, and the Rolle's law. So that means vapor liquid equilibrium for the ideal vapor in equilibrium with ideal solution. And then uh, we have seen what is Rolle's law, but we are going to extend that to calculate vapor liquid equilibrium in this short lecture. Now let's just quickly recollect what is Rolle's law. And the two important assumptions of the criteria behind the Rolle's law is it is uh, assumed that an ideal gas, uh, the vapor state is is expected to behave like an ideal gas, is in equilibrium with the liquid phase and the liquid phase is assumed to be like an ideal solution. So the vapor phase is an ideal gas whereas the liquid phase is an ideal solution. Uh, the thermal and hydrostatic equilibrium is already established so that means both the vapor and the liquid are at the same temperature and the pressure is known. If this is the case then uh, any component for any component I uh, which is in equilibrium between the vapor and the liquid can be expressed by this relationship which says that Yip is equal to Pi which is equal to Xi Pis. Now this PIS is a function of T, where YI and XI are the mole fraction of the component in the uh, liquid and the vapor phase respectively. So that means XI uh, is the mole fraction in the liquid phase and YI is the mole fraction in the vapor phase. P is the total pressure and PIS is this, uh, this, this term is the saturated vapor pressure of that component at that given temperature. Now uh, let's say for example we a C for a component containing N uh, for a system. So let us consider that the system containing N components and we are uh, trying to see how the equations will be for an N component system. So for every component, okay, so let's say for I equal to 1, we can write Y1P equal to uh, P1 which is equal to x1 p1s. Now we have to write explicitly as this function of temperature but typically this is not mentioned but we know that the partial pressure sorry the vapor pressure is a function of temperature. Uh, this pi is a saturated vapor uh, this pis is a saturated vapor pressure whereas if you see in this uh, slide below uh, this uh, this is the partial pressure. Okay, so this is the partial pressure. Right, so this term is partial pressure of component 1. So here Y1P is equal to P1 partial pressure of component 1 that is equal to X1P1S. Now similarly, suppose if you do for uh, the component 2, we can write as Y2P equal to this is like P2, which is equal to X2 P2S. I am not writing every time explicitly that this is a function of temperature but we know that the saturated vapor pressure of a component is function of its temperature. Similarly we can write for component uh, 3 like say Y3P is equal to P3 equal to X3 P3S. So that means in general for an ith component it is Yip equal to Pi equal to x i p a s or if you continue this till i equal to the last nth component that means y1 y n p is equal to p n equal to x n p n s now let us uh, do a summation of all this like suppose if you do a summation of all this what you will get can you just think for a moment so i'm just uh, extending the Rolle's law okay and or rather applying the Rolle's law for an n-component system 
uh, a vapor liquid system containing n components in the vapor phase and n components in the liquid phase. So I have written for every component. So if you add, what you will get? So you can easily see if you add, you will get terms like y1 uh, plus y2 plus y3 and so on uh, till yi and it keeps continuing in general till yn to p equal to so this is the summation of this term similarly you can have summation of this terms which will be like p1 this is partial pressure p2 plus p3 and so on till pn and this will be equal to x1 p1s plus x2 uh, x2 p2s plus x3 P3S and so on till the last component Xn PNS. So that means if you see that if you write for every component and then extend, this is what you get. Now you clearly know that this is equal to 1 because you know that sigma yi. If you add the mole fraction of all the component, this will be equal to 1 which is essentially this also the summation of partial pressure of all the components should give back the total pressure so this means this will become p equal to which is again the same and this you cannot reduce but we can write in a generic form as sigma xi pas so that means for an n component system if you apply rolls law you uh, this is all for the component equations so this is a component equation for every component i this is uh, the summation okay for the system summation for the system right so let us rewrite again so Rawls law okay uh, for a system so when I say system, I mean an ideal gas in equilibrium with an ideal solution in the liquid phase uh, containing n components. We can write for every component, we can write it as yip equal to uh, p sorry yip equal to pi, which is the partial pressure that is equal to xi pas. And if you, we can also write the summation equation which says P, the total pressure is equal to sigma xi PAS. Right? So, this is at the component level. So, what we have written in the first is for every component in the system, and this is uh, the summation if you do for all the components eventually you end up like this. Now let us, uh, if you write it for a binary component, can you just write it specifically for a binary component? So what if it is n equal to 2? Then obviously we know that for the first component we can write it as y1p equal to let's say x1p1s. I am not writing the partial pressure term but this is essentially the partial pressure term, no need to write it explicitly. And for i equal to 2, we know that y2p equal to x2p2s and obviously the summation equation is equal to p equal to sigma xi pas which is nothing but x1 p1s plus x2 p2s. Now this summation equation is essentially from this. So that means out of this three equation 1, 2 and 3, like say if you have this three equation, only two of the equations are independent. So that means let's say if this is 1 and 2 and 3, so out of these three equation, only two equations are independent. So if you add 1 and 2, you will get 3. Or if you have 1 and 3, if you just subtract 1 from 3, you eventually get 2. Why is it so? Because you have two more equations uh, which are hidden in this, uh, which does this mass balance. So we can write it as 
so we have sigma sorry uh, we can write it as sigma xi should be equal to 1 and sigma yi equal to 1 so let me say that this is equation 4 this is equation 5 so you can add 1 and 2 get 3 using 5 okay or you can uh, from 1 and 3 again from using 5 you can get back 2 right so essentially 1 2 among 1 2 3 and 5 not all are independent you would be able to use any two of these and get the third one because there is always uh, the mass balance achieved. And now let us list uh, how many variables are there for a, a two component system. So we have x1, x2, we have y1, y2, we have p and we have t. Then we have p1s, we have p2s. So the number of uh, uh, variables that you have is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the number of uh, variables that you have is 8. Number of independent equation. So that means number of uh, independent equations that we have in this is this is 1. Let's say I'm counting 1 in the component, 1 here. I am counting here and now I am counting this. So there are 4. So that means that gives us uh, the degrees of uh, freedom for a binary component system, vapor liquid system uh, from Rolle's law. Right? So the number of variables minus the number of independent equations, if I put 8 minus 4, so it is 4. So that means we need to fix okay we need to fix at least four variables uh, to solve the system of equation now can you guess what are these four variables right or what could be the four variables or okay so either this or we need to get okay four more uh, independent equations okay so either we need to get four more independent equation or we need to fix values for these four more variables only then this system of equation can be solved right so can you just look into this and say that if there are any other equations that we missed i'll just pause for a moment did we miss any equations here can you think? Right? Obviously, there could be one equation that we added, right? Like for example, if you see this term, what are these? Right? If you if you see this this two term, this term and this term, so that means I just this two terms. These two denote uh, the saturated vapor pressure. So that means uh, P1S okay, and P2S are essentially functions of temperature. So that means if we assume that we know these functions of temperature or we can read the saturated vapor pressure for a given temperature, that means these two are either known or we know what is the functionality of temperature. This means we have two more equations now. We have two more equations. Okay, here uh, for predicting PS or we either know this PS value. So that means this comes, uh, so if you add this plus two, so this means uh, here this comes to, uh, let's see, so this is, like 8 minus 4 plus 2 so that means this given to 2 only 2 uh, variables needs to be assumed now okay so let me summarize 
quickly this short lecture. So if you apply Rolle's law, okay, uh, for a binary, okay, vapor liquid system, uh, the equations that we have are x1 p1s equal to y1p and the other equation is p equal to x1 p1s plus x2 p2s then we have the summation like x1 plus x2 equal to 1 and then y1 plus y2 equal to 1 and obviously uh, let us assume that p1s and p2s are some functions of temperature or they are known right so these are the equations for a typical binary component uh, Per liquid system. Uh, the variable list that we have is x1, x2, which is the composition of the component in the two phases, y1 and y2, which is the composition in the vapor phase, pressure and temperature, P1s and P2s, which is the saturated vapor pressure of this component. So now uh, if you have uh, now this system has a degrees of freedom of 2 which means of this list if you assume the value of two variables then we will have a unique uh, solution so that means the moment we assume two variables it is possible to solve the system of equation and get a unique value for the rest of the variables right so that's our understanding we stop it here and in our next lecture, we will take the same example of a or the extension of a Rolle's law for a binary component system and we will see how to generate, how to make use of this relationship to generate the vapor liquid equilibrium data. Thank you all for watching this video. I hope this is clear.